Welcome to My Vaccine is Jesus. Today's discussion is in the response to JW Comments, Questions, and Objections playlist of this YouTube channel and is entitled Episode 6. Let us begin. So this video is a response to this recent short comment I received on one of my other videos. I don't think Trinitarians can biblically connect John 2 to Galatians 1 without contradicting themselves and bringing man-made, man-made traditions into the explanation. So, he doesn't think Trinitarians can biblically connect John 2 to Galatians 1 hmm, without contradicting themselves and bringing man-made traditions into their explanation. So let's see if that's doable or not. And let's see if I contradict myself and let's see if I bring man-made traditions into this explanation. Okay, here's John 2. We're going to look at verses 18 through 22. Okay, this happens right after Christ went to the temple in Jerusalem, saw the money changers, saw the individuals uh, selling oxen and sheep and doves, and got very upset at them, you know, basically from his perspective, I'm sure, desecrating the house of his father and actually kind of got violent. All right, let's pick it up in verse 18. Therefore, in response, the Jews said to him, to Christ, what sign can you show us since you are doing these things? Jesus replied to them, tear down this temple and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, this temple was built in 46 years and you will raise it up in three days. But he, Christ, was talking about the temple of his body. His body? Yes, his body. So he's going to raise up his body after three days? Yes, he's going to raise up his body. It's going to be a glorified, perfected body, but it's going to be his body. Why? Because that's what Christ just said. Uh, verse 22, when though he was raised up from the dead, when what was raised? His body? Yeah, his body. His disciples recall that he used to say this, and they believed the scripture and what Jesus had spoken about his body being raised after three days? Yeah, about his body. Now let's compare that to Galatians 1, verse 1. Paul, an apostle, neither from men nor through a man, but through Jesus Christ and God the Father, who raised him up from the dead. Okay, so I guess the big contradiction is in John 2, verse 21, 20 and 21, 19, 20, and 21, right? Christ is saying, I'm going to raise up my body after three days. And in Galatians 1, Paul teaches that the Father raised his body up at three days. So how can that possibly be? Well, number one, the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is, is the one who created reality. So even if something didn't make sense in reality, if God says it, it's true. And if we don't understand it, who cares? But I'll tell you, if something can easily be explained in our own reality without a contradiction, then it can easily be applied to God, right? Let's look at that. Let's look at an illustration from our own reality. Let's say there's a father and there's a son, and together they build a temple. Now, if the son said later that he built the temple, would he be telling the truth? Yes. And if the father said later that he built the temple, would he be telling the truth? Yes. So the son basically saying he built the temple is kind of like what Christ said in John 2. And the father saying he built the temple was kind of, kind of like what Paul taught in Galatians 1. No contradictions. Now, if the son said later that he built the temple by himself, would he be telling the truth? No. And if the father said later that he built the temple by himself, would he be telling the truth? No. Now, of course, the, you know Paul didn't lie and Christ didn't lie. Now, what's funny, you're calling them a, a liar because... You're saying, no, 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 it can't, it can't be what you both said. Well, it is without any contradiction or any insertion of any man-made tradition. And we're going to get into the, your, your own man-made tradition here in a second. So forgive the silliness. But that argument doesn't hold water at all. It's very simple and easy to do so. Now let's get into the elephant in the room that you just released with that point. Because as you notice, Christ told the Jews at the temple of God in Jerusalem that he was going to raise his body. And the watchtower teaches Jehovah Witnesses that no, 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 his body was completely destroyed and used up as the sacrifice. And what was resurrected was his spirit. Huh. Well, that goes completely against what Christ said in Luke chapter 2. Let's see about the rest of the gospel. Maybe there's some contradiction here or or let's see what's going on. So we're looking at Luke chapter 24, verses 36 to 43. 43, excuse me. While they, the disciples, were speaking of these things, he himself, that's Christ, stood in their midst and said to them, may you have peace. But because they were terrified and frightened, they imagined they were seeing a spirit. Now notice, they imagined they were seeing a spirit. So, hmm, what does that just show you right there? 
your imagination that Christ was a spirit there. Hmm. Verse 38, by the way, in, in the Greek it says phantasm. So they thought they saw phantasm. Verse 38, so he said, Christ said to them, why are you troubled and why have doubts come up in your hearts? Verse 39, see my hands and my feet of my body. That is my, I myself in my new glorified perfected body. Touch me and see, for a spirit does not have flesh and bones, just as you see that I have. Isn't that amazing? So in John 2, he says he's going to raise his body, and Christ is here demonstrating to them, I'm not a spirit, I'm a body. Look, touch me, see. Verse 40, and as he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet of his body. But while they were still not believing for sheer joy and amazement as seeing his body, he said to them, do you have something there to eat? So they handed him a piece of broiled fish and he took it and ate it before their eyes. Why? To demonstrate that he had a body like they had and he could eat fish like they could. Spirits can't eat fish, can they? Right? Now it's a perfected body. It's a glorified body. It's an amazing body, but it's still a human body. Let's go earlier in uh, Luke chapter 24, verses 13 through 16. This is when two of the disciples on the same Sunday that Christ's body was resurrected prior to him showing himself to anyone um, were, were, were traveling uh, to a village named Emmaus. Let's look, jump into it, verse 13. But look, on that very day, two of them, the disciples, were traveling to a village named Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and they were conversing with each other about all these things that had happened. Now, as they were conversing and discussing these things, Jesus himself, his body, approached and began walking with them, with his feet of his body. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. Huh. That must mean he's a spirit. No, Christ created their bodies and controls the molecules in their retinas. Christ could do whatever he wants to what they see or what they don't see. Remember in Matthew chapter 17, when he appeared in the transfiguration, he appeared different. When he's in, in Revelation chapter four and five, he appears as a lamb. And you'll see another, another appearance of him later. Christ can appear any way he wants to, and he can control what we see. He made our eyes, right? Just like he recreated the blind man's eyes in the Gospel of John, right? Um, anyway, continuing a little bit further, verses 30 to 31. And as he was dining with them, he took the bread, blessed it, broken, and began handing it to them with his physical hands of his glorified body. Not a spirit, please. At that, their eyes were fully open and they recognized him, but he disappeared from them. Oh, he's got to be a spirit. What? You're going to put limitations on God? God can do whatever he wants right? Jesus Christ is God. He can walk through walls. He can do whatever he wants. He can disappear too in his glorified body. Remember, when he was in that other body, he lowered himself to that of a servant. He allowed humans to spit on him and scourge him and crucify him and shove nails through him and spears. Well, guess what? No more of that after he did the work on the cross. John 20, uh, starting at verse 14 and going through 17. Okay, this is when uh, Mary Magdalene sees him. After saying this, she, Mary Magdalene, turned and saw Jesus standing there, his body. But she did not realize that it was Jesus again. He did not allow her to realize who it was at that point. 15, Jesus said to her, woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? She, thinking it was the gardener, said to him, sir, if you have carried him off, tell me where you have laid him and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. On turning around, she said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. So she recognized who it was. Christ allowed her to. 17, Jesus said to her, stop clinging to me, clinging to my body, for I have not yet ascended to the Father, but go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father and to my God and your God. Now, how could God say he has a God? Because he became man. And we be when he became a flesh body, the initial flesh body, not this perfected flesh body, Je Jehovah Almighty, the triune God, became his God. Because he was a perfect man, he followed all the rules, all the laws, all the commandments, and every man has a God. So as a man, he had a God. Okay, You'll see that referred to if you read Psalm 22.10 with spiritually open eyes. Let's continue. Verse is 26 through 29. This is eight days later, as you'll see, um, you know, right after he appeared to Mary Magdalene, he ascended to his father, then he appeared to the disciples, not with Thomas. He breathed the Holy Spirit on them. And then, of course, Thomas heard about it and said, unless I put my finger into the, hand, the, the mark of the nails of his hands. What? More than one nail? Yeah, exactly. There's another false teaching of the crucifixion that you were taught. He did not have one nail in his hands above his head because he was not on some torture stake. I've discussed this in other videos. But anyway, verse 26. 
While eight days later, his disciples were again indoors, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and he stood in their midst and said, May you have peace. So notice he can walk through walls. Why not? Verse 27, next he said to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands and take your hand and stick it into my side of his physical body, please, and stop doubting but believe. And answer Thomas said to him, my Lord and my God, kirios mu ke theos mu. Hmm. He just called him his Lord, which is how the Greeks referred to Jehovah, kirios, and his God. Wow. It's right there in front of your eyes. Now, if you're saying, no, 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 that was just him explaining it because he was in shock. Well, then he took the name of Jehovah in vain. He took the name of God in vain. He broke a major commandment. Hmm. Third commandment, right? Why didn't Christ correct him? Because he didn't have to correct him because he didn't take the Lord's name in vain because he was calling Christ his Lord, which he is. And he was calling Christ his God, which he is. Again, right in front of your eyes. Verse 29, Jesus said to him, because you have seen me, have you believed? Happy are those who have not seen and yet believe. What's even more amazing about this is you'll see the idea of a son of man in Daniel chapter 7, as we'll see here, and in Revelation chapter 1. Daniel saw the son of man, which was obviously Christ glorified body. Because notice when they're talking about someone like a son of man, what does that mean, like a son of man? A son of man is a human, someone like a human. Ah, why? Because he has a perfected, glorified, amazing body. So he looks human, but different than any other human because it's in a glorified, perfected body after his resurrection. Anyway, Daniel chapter 7, one of the visions of uh, Daniel the prophet, verse 13. I kept watching in the visions of the night and look, with the clouds of the heavens, someone like a son of man was coming, and he gained access to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him up close before that one. And to him they were given rulership, honor, and kingdom, that the people's nations and language groups should all serve him. His rulership is an everlasting rulership that will not pass away, and his kingdom will not be destroyed. Someone like a son of man who appears human. Humans have a body with a body, a glorified, perfected body, body, a body. Revelation chapter 1, verses 12 through 16. I turned, this is Paul on the, excuse me, John, forgive me, on the Elder Potmos. I turned to see who was speaking with me, and when I turned, I saw seven golden lampstands, and in the midst of the lampstand, someone like a son of man, exact same wording as Daniel, clothed into the garment that reached down to the feet and wearing a golden sash around his chest. Moreover, his hair and his head and his hair were white as white wool as snow, and his eyes were like a fiery flame. What's interesting about this is early in Daniel chapter 7, when Daniel sees the Ancient of Days on the throne, he has, he's very, it's very similar to this description of his hair, white as wool and as snow. Verse 15 on the right in Revelation 1. And his feet were like fine copper when glowing in a furnace, and his voice was like the sound of many waters. Now this is interesting. If you look at Revelation uh, 1, 13 and 14, notice the one like the Son of Man, the glorified body of Christ, has, appearing, interestingly, appearing like his father as the Ancient of Days with the white wool, uh, as, uh, hair, it's, uh, white as wool, snow, hair. Um, he has this golden sash on his chest, which would be above the loins, right? And he has his feet below the loins as fine copper. Why do I bring that up? Look at Ezekiel 1. Because when Ezekiel had an image of the Almighty God on the throne, it describes the loins upwards and downwards having this burning golden amber-like color. Interesting. Um, not sure where I left off. I'll just pick up at 60. Forgive me if I miss something. And he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth a sharp, long, two-edged sword was protruding, and his countenance was like the sun when it comes at its brightest. So, I don't think Trinitarians can biblically connect John 2 to Galatians 1 without contradicting themselves and bringing man-made traditions into the explanation. Well, number one, it was very simple to do without contradicting anything or bringing any man-made tradition. And what it unmasks is your false man-made tradition that Jesus Christ, when he was resurrected, did not have a body. Wow. I pray I spoke truth and interpreted the Holy Scripture correctly so that this discussion might have been a blessing to you, the listener. All truth comes from God. Any errors were my own. If it was a blessing to you, I would greatly appreciate if you could like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel. Lord willing, we shall meet again. May the Holy Trinity bless us all.